Chapter 41 Clash 3 You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. TL Note Here's the Sunday chapter that should have been posted last week. Sorry for the delays, I ate something very bad that made me very very sick. I still don't know what exactly it is that I ate that made me sick though. It's a mystery. Also, I forgot to include something in the last chapter. The numbers for the orcs that were given at the end of the previous chapter. Orc total number. 85 heavy armored, sword, shield, armor. 16 clubs. 43 long spears. 19 short spear. 8 goblin name cheat sheet. The G goblin is to make it easier to control plus F, goblin. G-I-G-A the goblin in that estranged group that was with the protagonist when he defeated an orc. He is currently a noble class, the highest amongst the protagonist's subordinates. He prefers to use the spear. Goblin, G.I. Gu, the former leader of the village. He was pressured by the protagonist in his goblin noble form and was added to his subordinates. He uses the long sword and is relatively smart for a goblin rare. Became a goblin noble in chapter 39. Goblin, G.I.G.I. known as a beast warrior, a goblin with the ability to tame beasts. He evolved while hunting spear deer with the protagonist. He prefers to use the axe. His goblin class is rare. Goblin, G.I. Go a goblin with many wounds on his body. The food of his horde was stolen by the gray wolves, so he made a decision to follow the protagonist. He is the most experienced amongst the goblin rares. His weapon is a curved katana. He acts like a samurai. Goblin, G.I. Za the druid goblin rare that recently joined them. Goblin, G.I. G.A. Goblin rare. He evolved in chapter 37 after hunting with G.I. Ga chapter 41. Clash 3, race, goblin, level, 62, class, duke, horde chief, possessed skills. Horde commander insurgent will overpowering hell swordsmanship be. Insatiable Desire King's Soul Ruler's Wisdom I Eyes of the Blue Snake Dance at Death's Border Red Snake's I Magic Manipulation Soul of a Crazed Warrior Third Impact, the Third Chant Divine Protection, Goddess of the Underworld, Altesia, Attributes, Darkness, Death, Subordinate Beasts, High. Cobalt, LV1 Higastra, LV1 Cynthia, LV1 Abnormal Status. Charm of the Saint Gripping the Iron Second that was over my shoulder, I ran as I cut through the thickets. Exposing myself to the enemy. Following from behind me was G.I. Go with his curved sword, the stealthy G.I.G., and the five groups of fifteen normal goblins. The orcs that had spread out before the village were already aware of us. They faced our direction, and they arranged themselves into a wall. A literal wall of flesh. If it was a while ago, we would have run upon being spotted, but, this time is different. G.U.R.U. Triple A. With a yell, the Eskil, overpowering Hal bellowed, giving the signal to the noble class, G.I. Gu, and the long-armed, G.I. G.A., on the other side. I saw the orc before me swing his club the same time as I held my great sword in a side stance. You're slow. My life is like a cloud of dust, Excel. There was no hesitation. A wall of air pushed me from behind with crushing pressure, propelling me toward the attacking orc as I thrusted out my sword. In the blink of an eye, my body crashed into the orc as my blade pierced into its flesh. Guaru Ooe. In the same instant, the ice skill, soul of a crazed warrior, activated. In exchange for the madness brought on by the crazed warrior's soul, physical strength 30% up, agility 30% up, magic power 30% up. The orc's club hit me from the side, but thanks to the damage reduction of 20%, it wasn't fatal. Then, with my great sword still pierced into the orc's body, I clad that same great sword in magic power, and then swung it up to cut through the orc's head. Turn me into a blade, enchant. My blade moved through the orc's body, cutting it as if it were a mere sheet of paper. And when the sword clad in black flames exited through the orc's head, it descended once more onto a nearby orc. Pio Giyue, the orc tried to use its club as a shield, but to its dismay. Both the club and its chest were cut through by the great sword. And as the sword moved back the course it had gone, it cut through the orc that was just right behind that orc. Move. We have to go even deeper. That was the only thought in my mind as I continued on my way. 
G-U-U-R-U-O-E-Triple-A. Everything that stands before me is an enemy. Move. Cut 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 kill cut kill cut c c c c c c cut. O o a g o a g a. Two orcs stood in my way as they swung down their long spears. As their spears descended, I struck with my sword, sending their spears flying away. The moment the orcs lost their weapons, they brought their fists up, and they rushed toward me. Meeting them, I rushed toward them as well, and I swung my great sword up from below. The tip of my sword met with the nape of one of the orc's neck, cutting it and decapitating it. The Eskil, swordsmanship B, had fully demonstrated its abilities, bringing forth a sword that knew no hesitation even in the fury of one's emotions. I forcefully swung down the sword that had been raised up high, drawing a line like a meteor toward the other oncoming orc. My blade met with the orc's thighs, piercing all the way to the core of the orc. As I removed the great sword from the orc, I fixed my posture. Then, with a flash of my blade, I decapitated the orc that had lost its balance and was falling down with its back turned toward me. There are enemies. 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 I swung my sword at the behest of the maddened, crazed warrior's soul. Everything around me is an enemy. Concern is needless. So bring forth your power, bring forth your magic, bring it all out and cut them all down. G U R U O A A A. Magic power once again gathered behind me. My life is like a cloud of dust, Excel. I opened a path by crashing my body into the orcs that tried to block my way. Then as I finished off an orc that toppled over, I swung my blade toward two other orcs that were approaching me from both of my flanks. I managed to cut off one of the orc's arms, but he didn't stop, only continuing to charge toward me even more. So in response, I grabbed his head, and using all of my body's strength, I flung the orc away. Then suddenly, I saw it from a distance. A body that was considerably big even amongst the huge dot builds of the orcs. It was the orc king. F O U U U N N D U U U U U U U. Move. Using only the surrounding orc's presence, I grasped their positions and swung my sword according to instinct. Left, right, in front, back. Back. T C H. When I turned around, what entered my eyes were the goblins desperately defending against the orcs, surrounded. I had gone out too deep, and the goblins couldn't follow. Not good. The moment I thought that, a club came sweeping at me from in front, sending me flying away. Soul of a crazed warrior was released, and the power that had brimmed in me withered. I fixed my grip on my great sword with my right hand. Then with the other hand, I grabbed a short sword that had been prepared beforehand from my armor, and I threw it toward the orcs that were surrounding the goblins to contain the situation. Follow the king. At G.I. Go's command, the goblins began to pursue my back even at the cost of sacrifices. The moment we stop, we die. We cannot stop until we reach the Orc King. If you want to live, then run like you want to die. Move. Turn me into a blade, enchant. I clad my blade in magic power, and I swung it against the Orc standing in my way. The blade cut through the Orc's large body, causing blood to spurt out. The rain of blood fell on my, dyeing my body in its hue. I continued on my way. Ten more steps until the orc king, three orcs wielding a shield and sword appeared before me. Leave this to us. But then a voice came from behind me, and G.I. Go and G.I. G. faced the three orcs. With only ten of them now, it was questionable whether they'd be able to even handle three orcs, but even then. I left the orcs to them. Because of the tis skill, soul of a crazed warrior and the consecutive uses of magic manipulation, my concentration has been waning. It feels like I could lose focus at any moment even now. G.I. Go rushed toward one of the sword and shield that wielding orcs. He jumped at the middle one from the three, and he struck out his sword twice, aiming for the orc's knees. He focused only on attacking the middle orc while his goblin subordinates followed right after him. The orc fell down to its knees, leaving the shield it wielded easy to deflect. With an attack, the orc sight was shut down, and the last goblin finished off the orc with an attack to its face. The following counterattack from the remaining two orcs were then stopped by G.I.G. and a nameless goblin. Although they were blown off, their efforts were not wasted. 
for right after, other goblins came in to attack the two orcs' legs, stopping the two orcs' pursuit. Well done. As I yelled that out loud, I stepped on the orc's head, using it as a stepping stone to jump ahead as I kicked myself off it. I looked down on the ground in mid-air. As I descended, I struck my flame.clad sword out, cutting an orc from its shoulder to its chest. The force of my fall was all completely transmitted into that blow. As we rolled on the ground, I took my sword out of its body. When I looked up, I saw the orc king's giant body before me. A gray-skinned giant was looking down on me. The pressure it gave off was completely different from when I saw it from afar. Moreover, its body was so big that the great sword it wielded looked like a long sword. Inside the Orc King's eyes shone a light different from the normal Orc's desire muddied eyes. The Orc King's eyes gleamed wisdom. Moreover, those two eyes of it carried with them scorn. I'm gonna fucking kill you. Name yourself, little one. The Orc King easily carried his sword above his head. His size was truly eye-popping. If you want me to tell you my name, then you should name yourself first. Aiming for the Orc King's feet, I bend over my body, and then I rocket it off. My name is a idiot, you're going to die while naming yourself. G-O-L G-O-L A chill suddenly attacked me as I ran for his feet. Immediately, I jumped to the side. My feet scraped against the ground as I broke my momentum. Then suddenly, a booming explosion resounded. When I took a look at where I had jumped from, I saw that there was a hole in the ground. The orc named G-O-L G-O-L, he is literally strong enough to destroy the ground. Seriously. Ho. So you dodged it, he looked at me. Wanting to split his skull apart, I tried to move my legs, but then I suddenly realized that I couldn't move my body. It was as if I was underwater. I dot impossible. Can you move, little one? The Orc King smiled as he inhaled. Not good, when I thought that, I too, breathed in. U-G-U-U-R-A-A-Triple-A. G-U-R-U-U-U-U-U-U-A-Triple-A. I covered the Orc King's howl with my own. Overpowering howl. I can only thank my stars that the effect could be cancelled off. Ho. So you can also use it. A needless comment. He already knew either way. In any case, it seems he can also use skills properly. From the looks of things, it would appear that one can gain skills after becoming king. Moreover, to name yourself, little one. If I carelessly name myself, he might just fulfill the conditions for a skill similar to my ruler's wisdom I, widening this already desperate gap even wider. I have no name. But with this my own ruler's wisdom I will also be sealed. As I tried to near the orc king with my great sword over my shoulder, the foe before me lifted the great sword that he had used to destroy the ground. The resulting force of the wind as he lifted his sword stopped my charge. If I receive a hit from him, I will surely die. I probably won't also be able to use dance at death's border. The same goes for eyes of the blue snake since we are currently being surrounded by the orcs. I need to have the advantage in number to use that skill, so it's impossible. I don't have a way of identifying my opponent's weakness. With so many of my options blocked, the only ones left are soul of a crazed warrior, magic manipulation, the third chant. My overpowering howl cancelled out with his as well. This isn't looking good. What should I do? In that case, a heavy voice echoed out from G-O-L G-O-L's mouth, I thought he would take a step forward, but then his giant figure suddenly approached me at a frightening speed. I don't have time to think. Twisting my body, I forced myself off the Orc King's trajectory. The sound of an explosion literally blew up from beside me. I tried to increase the distance between me and G-O-L G-O-L, but he rushed toward me again. He headed toward me with his sword pierced into the ground. In response, I desperately fought his sword with my own, but meeting his blade was the most that I could do. Like that I was blown off into a large tree. I didn't even have time to use a falling technique to soften the blow, so my body received the brunt of the force as my back firmly planted itself onto the tree. With me gasping for breath, and my body unmoving, it was clear that death was just around the corner. Despite that I calmly glared at G-O-L G-O-L's giant body. Ho, oh, you can still fight. That voice no longer contained the scorn it had contained at the start. 
all it had now was admiration. Well it's all or nothing, should I try it out? Exchanging blows with him with the soul of a crazed warrior. No, that sort of power isn't soul of a crazed warrior can do something about. That power is like an ice crusher, destroying anything that gets into its range. A one-dot-hit instant killing attack, in other words. Seriously, it's so strong, I'm feeling envious. But. NN, again, GOL GOL brandished his sword as he rushed toward me. Turn me into a blade, enchant. I still haven't run out of cards. I followed the course of his great sword with my eyes. And as it descended, I met his blade with my own blade that was clad in flames. My aim was his weapon's destruction. My arms creaked as I received the pressure of his great sword. Ho, oh, I can't stand that grin of his. I managed to succeed to some extent, but unfortunately I couldn't break his sword all the way. It must be his skill that he managed to force this kind of result. Still. I at least managed to crack his sword. I thought that to myself as I gleefully stared at the crack on his great sword. Then, suddenly, I saw red ether seep out of the orc's body. I am strong, I am peerless and bless. Just like mine, he clad his blade in magic power. His sword flickered within the burning flames of red ether. With this, it won't break. G.O.L. G.O.L. smiled as he glared at me. He grasped his great sword in his two hands as he faced me. Calm down, the situation won't change. I'll still die in one hit if I get hit by that sword. That's all. That's all. G-U-R-U-O-A. Defeat is unacceptable. Such a thing is an insult to those who have died for me. Moreover, to those who are still desperately fighting now. I will win. A pleasant pressure. The one who will come out the victor is me. I'll kill this bastard while he's still taking me lightly. Go and die along with that hubris of yours. I moved at my fastest. I slashed with my brandished sword, but G.O.L. G.O.L. easily stopped it. I wanted to click my tongue, but bearing it, I attacked again. Sparks erupted between the black and red flames. Shockwaves visible even to the onlookers exploded. But despite the fearsomeness of that scene, I willingly thrust my body into it. As I stepped in, I struck my sword up against the Orc King. But I knew that he could also stop this. That giant body of the Orc King's remained unmoving. It didn't move even the slightest bit. The Orc King only leisurely responded to my attacks. And each time I desperately met his blade with mine, my feet would dig into the ground. Fucking brute. We exchanged blows within a space of three meters square. The battle hasn't ended yet but I'm gradually being pushed back. That's a given. My attack is a far cry from my opponent's strength. G.O.L. G.O.L.'s attack is so strong it can even paralyze my hands with every hit. My body had already been blown away ten times in this fight so far. Then G.O.L. G.O.L.'s blade swung again. That was my limit. His blade descended from above, carrying gravity with it. I dodged. You backed off. Exclaimed G.O.L. G.O.L. happily. And then, in a twinkle, G.O.L. G.O.L.'s giant body suddenly appeared before me. I didn't even have time to dodge as I received the brunt of his blow. I was sent flying to my back like I was just hit by a truck. I was probably sent flying five meters away as I mowed through every thin tree in my path. Finally, I stopped when my back hit against a strong tree. Somehow though, I hadn't let go of my sword once despite that. It was strange even to me. Guha. I spit out red blood and I coughed. You did well. Little king with no name. Ho, you can still stand up. Using my great sword as a cane, I stood up. And the black flames flickered. Of course. I poured power into my shaking arms. Chapter 42 Conclusion You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Goblin name Cheat Sheet The G Goblin is to make it easier to control plus F, Goblin, G-I-G-A the Goblin in that estranged group that was with the protagonist when he defeated an orc. He is currently a noble class, the highest amongst the protagonist's subordinates. 
he prefers to use the spear. Goblin, G.I. Gu, the former leader of the village. He was pressured by the protagonist in his goblin noble form and was added to his subordinates. He uses the long sword and is relatively smart for a goblin rare. Became a goblin noble in chapter 39. Goblin, G.I.G.I. known as a beast warrior, a goblin with the ability to tame beasts. He evolved while hunting spear deer with the protagonist. He prefers to use the axe. His goblin class is rare. Goblin, G.I. Go a goblin with many wounds on his body. The food of his horde was stolen by the gray wolves, so he made a decision to follow the protagonist. He is the most experienced amongst the goblin rares. His weapon is a curved katana. He acts like a samurai. Goblin, G.I. Za the druid goblin rare that recently joined them. Goblin, G.I. G.A. Goblin rare. He evolved in Chapter 37 after hunting with G.I. Ga Chapter 42. Conclusion, Race, Goblin, Level, 62, Class, Duke, Horde Chief, Possessed Skills, Horde Commander Insurgent will overpowering Hell Swordsmanship be, Insatiable Desire King's Soul Ruler's Wisdom I Eyes of the Blue Snake Dance at Death's Border Red Snake's I Magic Manipulation Soul, of a Crazed Warrior Third Impact, the Third Chant, Divine Protection, Goddess of the Underworld, Altesia, Attributes, Darkness. Death, Subordinate Beasts. High Cobalt, LV1, Gastra, LV1, Cynthia, LV1, Abnormal Status, Charm of the Saint, G-U-R-U-A. The chief's voice can be heard from afar. The very voice of the chief that they should have been supporting. Neither the long-armed G-I-G-A nor the former chief of the village, G.I. Gu, could look each other in the eye. Under each of them were fifteen goblins. They led them to march against their enemies as they targeted the weak flanks of their foes, attacking them at the same time as the chiefs on the opposite side. But despite that, the damages they incurred were big. Although they were both noble goblins, the goblins they led were just mere goblins. Already three have died. And none of the goblins under them were uninjured. The king is in trouble, muttered G.I.G.A. as he spun his spear to his long arm, sweeping the clotted blood of the orcs away. We have to go, but, G.I. Gu responded as he looked at the scene before them. What spread before their eyes were the hordes of orcs blocking their way. The king had broken through the hordes of orcs. They needed to support him. Being the former leader of the village, G.I. Gu was learned in the ways of battling as hordes against hordes. He watched over everything. If they were to attack from here at the same time, then even just a little, it should be possible to separate the forces of the orcs from the king. As G.I. Gu concluded that to be their role, he turned his gaze toward G.I. G.A. who was beside him. G.I. G.A. was skillfully fiddling with his spear through the use of his long arms that true to its label as a deformation, reached the ground in its length. Let's go to the king, said G.I. Ga hearing that, G.I. Gu couldn't help but sigh in the back of his head. G.I. G.A. was loyal, but his knowledge in leading hordes was lacking. That's the reason why he wishes to go to the king's side so. For that, we must break through here first, replied G.I. Gu. After confirming G.I. Ga's nod, G.I. Gu ordered his subordinates. They gradually neared the orcs as they measured the distance. Fortunately, the orcs were also wary of them and were not proactively attacking. When their hordes had neared the foes enough, they charged. Go. As G.I. Gu released the full strength of his cooperation skill, he struck his long sword against an orc. But that attack that would have easily split a common goblin's head was easily received by the orc. Still, it was within the scope of his prediction. At his attack, the goblins around him all moved closely to the ground, almost to a crawl, and they approached the orc. They struck the orc's feet, then broke away. The orc's pained voice rose, and G.I. Gu leaned in and struck the orc's head once more. This time, he killed the orc. Suddenly, the wind blew past him from his side as a long spear pierced through the body of an orc. Looking at that spear's pommel, it was G.I. G.A. who had struck out that spear. Formidable, praised G.I. Gu. The reason G.I. Gu hadn't been receiving attacks from his surroundings was mostly because of G.I. G.A. who was fighting by his side. With his long arms, G.I. Gu's range was bigger than the others, allowing him to strike against the orcs freely with his instant kill. 
that's why G.I. Gu used the goblins and challenged the orcs to a melee. With G.I.G.A., they could demonstrate the effectiveness of the three-man cell to its limit. We'll continue toward the king like this. At G.I. Gu's command, everyone nodded. Lord G.I.G.A., said a goblin wielding a long spear as he followed behind G.I. Ga, don't push yourself, G.I.G.A. told him. That goblin was one of the goblins born after the chief had taken control of the horde. And under the chief's orders, he is one of the goblins G.I.G.A. had taught the spear to. A recent recruit that had just reached adulthood. But although a fresh recruit, he had to partake in this war. Naturally, the goblins that G.I.G.A. had taught gathered around him. And like his own chief, he made them follow his back. Don't fall behind ordered G.I. Gu. At G.I. Gu's voice, G.I.G.A. lightly nodded. It's for the king, said G.I. Gu. Of course, replied G.I. Gu G.I.G.A., with his spear. G.I. Gu, with his long sword, they each gripped their respective weapons. At last, we can finally begin. Skill, dance at death's border stage 2 activated. Physical strength 30% up, agility 30% up. Also, skill, the soul of a crazed warrior has also activated. In exchange of the mental corrosion due to the crazed warrior's soul, physical strength 30% up, agility 30% up, magic power 30% up. G-U-R-U-U-U-A-U-U-A. Bring it on. This much strength was added to the great sword I held over my head. Then with a step, I went beyond my limits, adding pressure to my internal wounds. As blood vomited out of my mouth, I attacked. Oh. For the first time, I had managed to return G.O.L. G.O.L.'s great sword. Continuing, I struck again. I don't have the time to bother with my internal injuries. Oh. Even though he was being pushed back, the Orc King's mouth happily twisted into a smile. Annoying, I thought. Oh, oh, oh. Like I could understand his feelings. Something like that is for people who are equals. Right now, all I need to think about is defeating the enemy before me. As my blade met with my foes, I sent his great sword back. For the first time, I was able to injure him. My great sword had struck against the Orc King's chest, allowing red blood to flow out. I'm happy, said the Orc King. It was the first time the Orc King had jumped back. I am the maddened one, Berserker call. The strong king, G-O-L, G-O-L. As soon as the Orc King spoke those words, my instinct immediately warned, not good. Following my instinct, I immediately moved forward. G-U-R-U-O-A. G-O-L, G-O-L stared at me as I struck my blade against him. Acceleration, sword speed, that attack that could not be criticized in any way was stopped with G-O-L, G-O-L's one-handed grip on his great sword. Small king, I will no longer ask for your name. The Orc King's heavy, cracking voice reminded me of the dead of hell. Just, fight. Fight with me. Goblin King. King. Suddenly, I felt as if I heard a voice yelling at me from afar. When I looked over during the downtime of our fight, I saw a horde of goblins, drenched in blood, surrounded by the orcs. Then a storm blew before me. The ground was hollowed, the sky was torn, and the wind whirled. Fight with your fists, fight with your weapon, fight. G-U-R-U-O-G-O-O-O. It was truly a maddened giant. I was right to step aside. It seems the Orc King rampaging in the world of humans isn't a lie. The unfolding scenery before me was enough to prove that. Anyone who entered this storm would surely be crushed like ice under an ice crusher. But even then, even then. What will a long battle bring me? Behind me are the goblins desperately defending against the orcs. I can't run. G-U-R-U-O-O-E. I stopped the fear crawling up my back. Don't be afraid. I defeated the orc leader. I defeated the gray wolves. I've finally come this far. As I thought that, I gritted my teeth, keeping them from chattering out of fear. Then I held out my sword against that rampaging storm. Our blades met. Oh! Oh! Fight! The Orc King screamed as his body shook in joy. I took back my sword that was blown back, and I struck again. Our blades met. 
having mustered every ounce of strength I could, I was able to send his sword back. At that, blood spilled out of my mouth, and shockwaves exploded at the meeting of our blades. Then I took my unfeeling hands, and wielded my sword tight again. But even then, I was at a disadvantage. The orc king's been attacking with only one hand, and yet all I can do is barely stand up to him despite using both of my hands. At this rate, I won't last long. Isn't there something? Something. Even a moment's fine. Suddenly, at that moment, I heard a war cry bellow out from afar. Focusing my sight toward the opponent before me, I used my ears to surmise the source of that voice. That war cry gradually grew closer, and then a G-R-U-R-U-A-O-A. T-C-H. I'm perfectly controlling soul of a crazed warrior, and I'm even using the multiple activations of dance at Death's Border that has never failed to take my foes' lives. On top of that, I even have magic manipulation, and yet. And yet the Orc King is still stronger. As G-O-L G-O-L let out his fighting spirit, an attack fell down from my head possessing pressure like that of a falling giant hammer. I reflexively received that attack head on with my great sword. At the exploding impact, my feet sunk into the ground, blood spilled, sapping my stamina, and a fatal opening was opened. King. There, I heard the cries of goblins. Is it no good after all? As I thought that, looking up toward the giant, something passed before me. A giant shadow. New as G-O-L G-O-L exclaimed out loud in surprise, the great sword that was right before my eyes was blown away by a spear deer. Spear deer. It's here, it's here. The plan I had given to G-I-G-I to direct the herd of spear deer from the lake is finally here. Moreover, within my hazy vision was the orc king being forcibly pushed around by the herd of spear deer. It's now. My body is like a cloud of dust, Excel. Ignoring my screaming body, I rocketed off, and I aimed for the small opening made by the spear deer. The pressure that had solidified into a wall mercilessly attacked me. Turn me into a blade, enchant. Even if it's unreasonable. Using the increased magic power, I casted both excel and enchant. I even activated the third chant. As I wielded my blade in a side dot stance, I confirmed the course to follow as I ignored my crumbling vision. Then I let it loose. My field of vision became blank. White. Impudent, said the Orc King. Is it, here? Chief. I heard G.I. Go's voice. G.I.G.A., don't rush. To the direction of the voice, XL. Go. J.U.U.O.A. As I felt the impact's shock, the Orc King's scream entered my ears. Pursue him. I forced my body ignoring the sounds of muscles being torn apart. And I moved the now unmoving sword. Now, there's no other time but now. I took the sword that had been stood, and I raised it up over my head. G-O-B-O, O-U-O-A. Relying only on the sound of the foe's cries, I brought forth all of my strength. Be dot a starred, not yet. My life is like a cloud of dust, Excel. Almost there. Sticking close to the Orc King, I accelerated, and I cut through his body even deeper. G-U, ah, not yet dot, not yet. Turn me into a blade, enchant T-C-H. I tried to activate a skill, but pain suddenly ran through my right arm, causing the power in my body to decline. Have I used it all up? Immediately after that thought, my body was blown away. After activating all those uh, skills, I finally reached the limit of my ether. My body can no longer move, but... Even then, I have to fight. With only that thought, I forced my body to stand up. But then it occurred to me. My great sword was no longer in my hands. Not good. If I were to get hit now, I won't be able to retaliate. Not good, not good. Suddenly, at the bottom of that well of despair and panic, the vision that had been lost began to clear up. What greeted me next was the image of a giant orc, lying motionless with his feet pierced by a spear, and his body skewered by a great sword. It was the dead orc king. Did I, win? When I looked down my own body, I saw a deep wound extending from my shoulder to my stomach, 
bleeding incessantly. At its gushing, a pool of blood had gathered under me. What had been done could no longer be undone. King. Just when I thought I heard G.I. Go's cry, my consciousness fell into the abyss. Skill, instinct acquired. When your life is in danger, you can avoid it by relying on your instinct. Evasion increased by 20%. Author's note. And so, the orc battle came to an end. But. Due to fighting a bit recklessly, a certain someone is. Chapter 43. The Goddess, again. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Goblin named Cheat Sheet. The G Goblin is to make it easier to control plus F, Goblin, G-I-G-A the Goblin in that estranged group that was with the protagonist when he defeated an orc. He is currently a noble class, the highest amongst the protagonist's subordinates. He prefers to use the spear. Goblin, G.I. Gu, the former leader of the village. He was pressured by the protagonist in his goblin noble form and was added to his subordinates. He uses the long sword and is relatively smart for a goblin rare. Became a goblin noble in Chapter 39. Goblin, G.I.G.I. G.I. known as a beast warrior, a goblin with the ability to tame beasts. He evolved while hunting spear deer with the protagonist. He prefers to use the axe. His goblin class is rare. Goblin, G.I. Go a goblin with many wounds on his body. The food of his horde was stolen by the gray wolves, so he made a decision to follow the protagonist. He is the most experienced amongst the goblin rares. His weapon is a curved katana. He acts like a samurai. Goblin, G.I. Za the druid goblin rare that recently joined them. Goblin, G.I.G.A. Goblin Rare. He evolved in Chapter 37 after hunting with G.I. Ga Chapter 43. The Goddess, again, Race, Goblin, Level, 62, Class, Duke, Horde Chief, Possessed Skills, Horde Commander Insurgent will overpowering Hell Swordsmanship be, Insatiable Desire King's Soul Ruler's Wisdom I Eyes of the Blue Snake Dance at Death's Border Red Snake's I Magic Manipulation Soul, of a Crazed Warrior Third Impact, the Third Chant, Instinct, Divine Protection, Goddess of the Underworld, Altesia, Attributes, Darkness, Death. Subordinate Beasts, High Cobalt, LV1 Higastra, LV1 Cynthia, LV1 Abnormal Status, Charm of the Saint What spread before me was a familiar scenery I'd once seen before. How are you feeling, boy? There isn't anyone but that woman, Altesia, who would call me that. As of now, the worst, actually. I need to keep up an abusive tone when dealing with this one. You've gotten quite handsome, haven't you? Sarcasm. The goddess of the underworld who narrowed her eyes was being patient. And. Are things going well? What things? That conquest and domination of yours. You are making progress, right? Or so her smile seemed to say. On top of the goddess' seductive charm, she also released a contrasting innocent charm. In response, I activated insurgent will. Yeah, it's going well. As usual, the goddess had snakes serving her by her feet. She also wore the same pure white toga over her body. And even the demonic statues lined up in the surroundings were exactly as they were before. If this place really is the underworld, well... I have to say it's a lot easier to go in and out than I thought. The goddess who sat in her throne emanated a dignified and coercing aura befitting that of the ruler of the underworld. Was she satisfied with my answer? Or was she not? Her two golden eyes narrowed themselves into a slit like a snake's. While her white porcelain skin was as usual, beautiful beyond perfection as if a sculptor had, to his soul's exhaustion, carved her body. And she folded her hands together, resting her perfectly sculpted chin over it as she stared at me. Hmm. Then I guess that means it wasn't a bad idea to go easy on you after all. Go easy. What are you talking about? As if satisfied with herself, the goddess of the underworld, Altesia's face twisted into a smile just like a little girl who's enjoying herself in her own deviltry. I'm talking about the divine protection. The interference has gotten weaker recently, right? So she was talking about the goddess of healing, Zenobia. So you say, yet your mood remains foul. 
I purposely provoked her. If she were to keep up this facade of hers as a seductive goddess, I'll eventually fall prey to her charms. Talking will be easier on me when she's mad. You really are smart. You purposely choose to provoke me to weaken the effect of the charm you receive from the divine protection, but unfortunately, I have no intention of falling for that anymore. Seeing her smile like that, I can't help but think she finds this haggling amusing. But contrast to her, her happy demeanor's no different from binding me in chains. What are you scheming? Gradually, I've began to breathe harder. But even then, I continued to resist against that as I kept my temper in check. Nothing in particular, as of now, she chuckled. Just that, it's been a while, so I kind of wanted to talk to you. Don't lie. Oh dear. How vexing. I was telling the truth too. She looked at me with the complacency of a mother looking down her child, no, I suppose this is more the strong looking down the weak instead. The high dot pitched laughter of the goddess of the underworld, Altesia, resounded within the pits of my mind. Also, it seems you've taken good care of it. That thing I gave you. Asterisk thumped suddenly, the coiled black dot flame snake on my right arm pulsated in response to its master's voice. Even pitch black, Varid, seems to have taken a liking to you. Looks like I was right in lending him to you. Pitch black, Varid, is that the name of the snake coiled in my arm? Yep. A cute hell snake, Altia, I gave birth to. I suppose you could refer to him as your elder brother for the time being. Stop joking. I don't recall you giving birth to me. Ha! 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 Well it'd be great if you could recall that sort of stuff. While we were talking, it suddenly occurred to me. I'm not feeling the same pressure I felt when we met last time. Why? She couldn't possibly seriously just want to talk to me, could she? Come to think of it, I still haven't heard the reason why you fight. Is Zenobia's daughter, Rescia, the reason why you picked up your sword? Now what? Don't make me laugh. Didn't I tell you? There is only one reason I fight, and that's for conquest and domination. Then you wouldn't mind if you lost that girl, right? No tears, no sorrow, yes. Her gaze was sharp, piercing through me into my very core. Of course. C. Could it be? Did I not make it in time? Have the orc overrun everything already and set it all on fire? Keeping up a front, I tried to act tough, but in the end, I couldn't fool myself of my own feelings. I am, after all, horrible at lying. <laughs> calm down, calm down. Zenobia's daughter, Rescia, as of now, is still safe. When those words entered my ears, I couldn't help but feel relieved. Annoyed, I grit my teeth. To think I would actually unconditionally believe the underworld goddesses, Altesia's, words on my own. The more I want to believe her, the more she'll lead me astray. That fact tugged at my heartstrings, pulling both shock and anger. It's up to you whether to believe it or not. But, danger is approaching. Declared the goddess with an expressionless face. The goddess of destiny, Luriyuna, has already found someone to her liking. Do you know what this means? Luriyuna, the third daughter who manipulates destiny, and guides heroes to fight against the forces of the underworld. You mean to say a hero has been born? The goddess smiled. Quick as ever I see. That's right, it's your natural enemy. If I, who is a monster, will try to subjugate the world, then there will definitely be an existence who will stand before me. If he who leads the monsters to conquer the world is called the Demon King, then the one who stands before that existence is the hero. If I am to become the High King of the world, then the hero who possesses overwhelming power shall undoubtedly appear to stand in my way. As of now that hero's but an innocent child that knows nothing. But it's only a matter of time before he gains power and becomes a hero. A voice that declared the absolute truth. And the one who shall stand beside the hero is no other than the saint. Forcibly, she slipped into the gaps in my thoughts, and she forcefully dragged out my innermost concern with the uttering of that one word. And that saint is Rescia. I asked. You will lose her, you know, she confirmed. I couldn't say anything back. 
or rather you could say my mind had gone completely blank as words of denial continuously surfaced within my heart. Shall I lend you my strength? Altesia proposed. What? The goddess smiled with the smile of a loving mother. Gently embracing everything, that motherly love of hers filled my chest. I've also been troubled much by those so called heroes in the past. Besides, seeing a cute boy beaten black and blue is right. Spontaneously, I ended up wanting to nod. I want power more than anything else. The fight with the Orc King made it clear to me just how weak the goblins are. But, the sliver of will left within me activated insurgent will. What will you do? Do you want to try clinging on to me? Ah. Uh. I would, I would, if I weren't a king that is. I refuse. The fog in my head cleared up. Oh my, that's rather unexpected. Why refuse? I will fight on my own volition, I said. I will be the one to choose where my men die. I will be the one to send them to war. And it shall be for my sake that they will shed blood. And in so doing, should the day of defeat come, it shall be mine, all mine. The goddess of the underworld, Altesia, quietly looked at me. As usual, I had no idea what she was thinking. I am fighting my own battle. To cling to you is to accept my own defeat. That's why I have no intention of clinging to a goddess. Obstinate, huh? The goddess Riley smiled, and I smiled a bold smile in return. You gambled on me, so just shut up and watch. I won't lose. When I mouthed those words, the goddess' face went blank. Then she burst out into a guffaw. <laughs> she held her tummy as she laughed out loud in front of me. She's laughing again, but as usual, I don't see what's so funny. Interesting, as expected, you're really interesting, smiled the goddess as she wiped the tears off her eyes. As she finally contained her laughter to some extent, she clapped her hands. At that, a gate appeared behind me. If you pass through that door, you'll be able to return to your own body. Happily, I turned my back to the laughing goddess. Hey, she said. At times like this, what do you guys say? My back remained facing toward her as I replied. The old you, the goddess of valor, the old you, what would she say? Just for a little, I heard her gulp. Show your courage, she said. Nodding, I passed through the gate. The voice I heard, although just a little, might have been shaking. Are you all right? When I opened my eyes, what first entered my ears was G.I. Zaw's voice, who was unusually panicked. What's the matter? I asked. Where'd your usual composure go? When G.I. Zaw saw me reply like that, grinning, he couldn't help but nod back, dumbfounded. Damn it, seriously. You're way too reckless I say. I think my life just got shorter just now. Well thanks to you, the casualties have been minimized though. I wanted to ask him whether he was always this sort of character or not, but I decided it was wiser not to. What happened to the orcs? I asked as I raised my body. They withdrew as soon as you defeated the orc king. Although it's also because G.I.G.I. successfully lured the spear deer. Last night, I ordered G.I.G.I. to take 15 goblins under him to go look for herds of spear deer to lure and crash against the horde of orcs. He took a lot more time than expected, but that can't be helped. After all, the only way he had to control the course of the herds was through the goblins' overpowering howl. It should be the first time for G.I.G.I. to use beasts too. But still he managed to accomplish his task well. The damages. I asked. The holes we've dug around the village are mostly no longer usable. The fences have also been pulled down. As for the damages to the troops. Twenty goblins have been killed. But considering we managed to repulse that orc horde, it's actually quite small. As G.I. saw matter. Of. Fackley reported the situation, I nodded. The damages we incurred were much, true. But in the end, the damage incurred wasn't fatal. I got it. I'll take care of the rest. Go rest. Also, speaking of G.I.G.A., I began to stand when G.I. Zaw began to speak again. 
But then at that moment, I felt the sensation of something eating at my guts. Oi. It's nothing. The snake, pitch black, varied, coiled around my right arm, throbbed. What I heard was the deep voice of a man. Show your courage, was it? What nostalgic words, huh, little brother? The voice came and left, leaving only those words. As you have broken through level 100, your ho class will now change. Your he class will change from duke to lord. Skill, swordsmanship has risen to swordsmanship B+, skill, horde commander has changed into ruler of the horde, skill, ruler's wisdom 2 acquired. Skill, magic manipulation has leveled up. Author's note. The goddess that has changed her approach from brute force to a more roundabout way. The protagonist that's aware, but can't do anything about it. And the red snake that grows in power with each evolution now, what will happen? Chapter 44 Mad God You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Goblin named Cheat Sheet. The G Goblin is to make it easier to control plus F, Goblin, G-I-G-A the Goblin in that estranged group that was with the protagonist when he defeated an orc. He is currently a noble class, the highest amongst the protagonist's subordinates. He prefers to use the spear. Goblin, G.I. Gu, the former leader of the village. He was pressured by the protagonist in his goblin noble form and was added to his subordinates. He uses the long sword and is relatively smart for a goblin rare. Became a goblin noble in Chapter 39. Goblin, G.I.G.I. G. I. known as a beast warrior, a goblin with the ability to tame beasts. He evolved while hunting spear deer with the protagonist. He prefers to use the axe. His goblin class is rare. Goblin, G.I. Goa goblin with many wounds on his body. The food of his horde was stolen by the gray wolves, so he made a decision to follow the protagonist. He is the most experienced amongst the goblin rares. His weapon is a curved katana. He acts like a samurai. Goblin, G.I. Za the druid goblin rare that recently joined them. Goblin, G.I. G.A. Goblin Rare. He evolved in Chapter 37 after hunting with G.I. Ga, Race, Goblin, Level, 5, Class, Lord, Horde Chief, Possessed Skills, Ruler of the Horde Insurgent, Will Overpowering Hell Swordsmanship Be, Insatiable Desire King's Soul Ruler's Wisdom I Eyes of the Blue Snake Dance at Death's Border Red Snake's I Magic Manipulation Soul, Of a Crazed Warrior Third Impact, The Third Chant, Instinct Ruler's Wisdom 2, Divine Protection, Goddess of. The Underworld, Altesia, Attributes, Darkness, Death, Subordinate Beasts, High Cobalt Heisu, LV1, Gastra, LV1, Cynthia, LV1, Abnormal Status, Charm of the Saint Focusing My Consciousness, I Searched My Own Status. Skill, Ruler of the Horde The Strength of Your Followers Will Be Raised. Charm Toward Those of the Same Tribe Will Also Increase. Skill, Ruler's Wisdom 2 When Fighting with the Leader of Another Horde, Magic Power 20% Up. Damage received 20% up, and in exchange, damage dealt 30% up. The ruler of the horde has a good effect both for me and the horde. The charm part definitely means that it will now be easier for adherents to appear. Meaning, on top of my subordinate strength being raised, I'm also going to get more magic power. What more could I ask for? As for the ruler's wisdom, too it can basically be summed up into a skill catered towards a short conclusive duel. It's a skill that kind of gives off a kill or be killed feeling. It is true though that if the respective leaders of two opposing hordes could finish their duel faster, less lives will be sacrificed. It applies even for human opponents. After I finished checking my own status, I went to see how my subordinates were doing. I feel bad for Reshia, but I'll need to have her work for a bit. As I thought that to myself, I walked. I stopped moving for a moment to view the village that had managed to pass the night. Horrible, I muttered. I have heard G.I. Zaw's report, but I still can't help but be surprised seeing the damages with my own two eyes. But on the bright side, the threat from the west has been completely dispersed. With the threats from the west gone, the only thing left to threaten the survival of the goblins are the wild orcs and the spontaneous giant spiders. There won't be any more raids to the village, a fact worthy of celebration. Having a safe place to run to when things go south is really assuring. It makes it easier on the heart when going out to hunt. 
We paid a price for it, now I must make something out of it. As I forcibly made myself agree with that line of thought, I continued to check on the village's situation. King. What called me was a blue-skinned goblin. Lord Giigo has evolved. Kneeling before me, it was the former leader of the village, Giigo. In the previous battle, I had him take command as my right-hand man. And naturally, being the former leader of the village, he was able to do a good job. He is a noble-class goblin, the highest class next to me. There are also others who have evolved into a rare class. Would you like to see them, he asked. They're what we received in exchange for twenty goblin lives. I have to go and see them. Report, I ordered. As you will, Ji Gu replied. Summarizing Ji Gu's report, the one who evolved into the noble class is the Samurai Ji Go. While the number of goblins that have successfully evolved into a rare class is six. I'll have to think of a name. What a pain. What are your instructions regarding the newly evolved goblins? Right. It'll probably be fine to go and see them together. Besides, I need to properly check up on them. I also have to think how I'm going to make use of them. Call G.I. Go, I ordered. And, he seemed to want to say something more. Is there still something? I asked. No, there's nothing. After sending off G.I. Gu, I continued to go around the village. After a short wait when I got back to my house, G.I. Go came. I took a peek at G.I. Go's status. Race, Goblin, Level, 1, Class, Noble, Subleader, Possessed Skills, Swordsmanship B, Self. Made Man Veteran Chivalry Warrior's Soul, Divine Protection, Sword God, R.A. Barusa, Attributes, None His Swordsmanship Skill is quite high. If it's this high while he's still a Noble Class, then won't he surpass me once he goes up another class? Self, Made Man will cause his growth to take some time, but in exchange, he'll get more bonuses once he evolves up. Veteran will keep his opponent's critical rate in check. Enemy critical rate reduced by 30%. Moreover, when fighting at the front lines, physical strength 10% up, agility 10% up, and damage received 20% down. Chivalry will increase his charm toward fellow goblins by 20%. Warrior's soul is the same as G.I. Ga. And then, the one that I'm most interested in, his divine protection. It's my first time seeing a goblin other than me be blessed with a divine protection. His divine protection comes from the sword god, R.A. Barusa. Divine protection, sword god, R.A. Barusa. Reinforces the growth of one's swordsmanship. If the receiver of this divine protection can reach swordsmanship A+, then usage of the skill, mysteries will become possible. Using a weapon other than a sword will cause the receive to lose the divine protection. After seeing G.I. Go's status, I began thinking of a way to make the most of it. G.I. Go also received the subleader title when he evolved into a noble class, but the impression G.I. Go gives off is different. G.I. Go is the type to lead the other goblins with skill, whereas G.I. Go is the type to lead others through his charms. G.I. Go's way is more refined, but there are many amongst the faction of G.I. Go who admire him. Regarding the self-made man skill, I can make the most out of it as long as I have G.I. Go fight in the front lines all the time. The skill will also keep his opponent's criticals in check, so losing to a weaker opponent would be unlikely. He'll also last longer against stronger opponents. Right. If I'm going to make the most of him, it's got be the front lines. G.I. Go, you did a wonderful job in our battle this time. As reward, I grant you this sword. I picked a sword out of the piles of loot we looted from the orcs, and then I handed it to G.I. Go. Please excuse this one, but, as he continued to kneel down with his head down, G.I. Go shook his head. I would prefer a curved sword rather than a straight one. Well, that slipped through. My bad. Right. The sword god, R.A. Bazura, is watching over you after all. Then in that case, I should give him the same type of weapon. He did receive the divine protection from polishing his technique with the curved sword to this extent. So, I guess it's not strange at all that he might not want to use a different weapon even if it is also a sword. Well, as for me, I would hate it if he lost his divine protection after finally seeing another goblin receive one. 
picking out a curved sword that's still in good condition from the heaps of lots I bestowed it upon G.I. Go. I gratefully accept. As G.I. Go happily accepted the curved sword, the surviving, stubborn old goblin ordered for the next goblin to come in. This time it was a rare class. The next goblin has defeated three orcs despite being only a goblin. Three orcs. Impossible. Excuse me. The goblin that entered was a rare class goblin that was a size bigger than G.I. Go and G.I. Goo. Race, goblin, level, 1, class, rare, possessed skills, overpowering hull throw projectile spearmanship instant kill mad dog, divine protection, mad god, Zuoru, attributes, none if I recall correctly, this should be a goblin that was born after I became chief. But the face of this goblin's is completely different from before the fight. The once peaceful face has gone, wounded by war, and replaced by this face that doesn't have a drop of charm to it. His gaze is twisted by hatred, shooting strongly against even me as if I'm considered an enemy. Focusing my consciousness, I delved into the goblin's skill further. Instant kill aim at the target's vital point. Mad Dog due to receiving the divine protection of the mad god, Zu Oru, it will no longer be possible to use any skills. But in exchange, physical strength 40% up, agility 40% up, and damage received reduced by 40%. Status abnormalities will also be lifted. Isn't this divine protection too strong? Even without checking it with my own divine protection, I know that divine protections generally give some power in exchange for some side effects. In G.I. Go's case, he yearns for curved swords so much that he would even go against my will. In Reshia's case, her body will sometimes be taken over her goddess, and so on. Hmm. I wonder if this goblin is having his mind influenced by the god who gave him his divine protection. As I felt sympathy for him due to the similarity of our circumstances, I asked him a few questions, and then just as I was about to give him a name. Chief, please, let me hunt. Please, together. Even without activating the red snake's eye, I know full well that the mad dog has already been activated. But as for whether he activated it, or it was activated, I don't know. All right. If I leave this goblin like this, he'll be a danger to the horde. I'll have to save him. After all, I've finally gathered some good men. It'd be a shame to lose them right under my nose. We'll end here. The rest. I'll deal with tomorrow. As I declared that to the old goblin, I went out to the forest with the goblin that has been consumed by the mad god. Author's Note. G.I. Ga's fate will be revealed next chapter. Chapter 45 Sacrifice You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Goblin named Cheat Sheet The G. Goblin is to make it easier to control plus F. Goblin. G.I.G.A. the Goblin in that estranged group that was with the protagonist when he defeated an orc. He is currently a noble class, the highest amongst the protagonist's subordinates. He prefers to use the spear. Goblin, G.I. Gu, the former leader of the village. He was pressured by the protagonist in his goblin noble form and was added to his subordinates. He uses the long sword and is relatively smart for a goblin rare. Became a goblin noble in Chapter 39. Goblin, G.I.G.I. G. I. known as a beast warrior, a goblin with the ability to tame beasts. He evolved while hunting spear deer with the protagonist. He prefers to use the axe. His goblin class is rare. Goblin, G.I. Goa Goblin with many wounds on his body. The food of his horde was stolen by the Grey Wolves, so he made a decision to follow the protagonist. He is the most experienced amongst the goblin rares. His weapon is a curved katana. He acts like a samurai. Goblin, G.I. Za the druid goblin rare that recently joined them. Goblin, G.I.G.A. Goblin Rare. He evolved in Chapter 37 after hunting with G.I. Ga, Race, Goblin, Level, 5, Class, Lord, Horde Chief, Possessed Skills, Ruler of the Horde Insurgent, Will Overpowering Hell Swordsmanship Be, Insatiable Desire King's Soul Ruler's Wisdom I Eyes of the Blue Snake Dance at Death's Border Red Snake's I Magic Manipulation Soul, Of a Crazed Warrior Third Impact, The Third Chant, Instinct Ruler's Wisdom 2, Divine Protection, Goddess of.
The underworld, Altesia, attributes, darkness, death, subordinate beasts, high cobalt Hesu, LV1, Gastra, LV1, Cynthia, LV1, abnormal status, charm of the saint after having walked some distance from the village into the forest. Here'll be fine. I confronted the goblin rare that's been enthralled by the mad god Azu Oru. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Chief, the eyes before me swayed back and forth between various negative emotions. That jumble of emotions revolved around hostility. Mad God, I do not know why you have taken a liking to this goblin, but I won't let you do as you please. Goo. G U, G U U U V R V U A U U U V. Drool slobbered out of the goblin's mouth as his eyes turned into two dots. The goblin's body recent wounds gushed opened, causing blood to splatter and his body to convulse. Mad God According to Rescia, the Mad God is a god born during war. Originally, he was a compassionate god, but after having his friend fall in battle, the gravity of the sorrow he felt broke him, and he turned into a Mad God. A.A. Ah. Uh. Chief, W. Y. The goblin's mind continued to be eroded by the mad god, but it seemed to want to say something to me. Lord Jijijai G Triple A has S's. G I G A has. But then the pressure finally proved too great for the goblin, and the goblin swung his fist. Ah, ah, that fist driven only by emotion tore the air. But I couldn't just leave what he's saying alone. What happened to G I Ga? I dodged the descending fist. W H E D I D D D. You. The descending fist crushed even the ground, brying into it. Ah, eh, ah. With his fist still berated into the ground, the goblin flashed his sharp fangs as he tried to bite the back of my neck. What happened to G.I. Ga? A moment after blanking out, I suddenly remembered the voice that called out to me while I was fighting the Orc King. That voice was G.I. Ga's, wasn't it? The worst possibility flashed through the back of my mind. Then while I was blanked out, thinking to myself, the fist enthralled by the mad god landed itself into me. My brain, shaken, I was sent fling away. I know he's borrowing the power of the mad god, but who would have thought that he would be this strong? That power that could cross over two class differences made me wonder of its possible applications. But. G-I-G-I-G-I-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-I-G-
but fortunately, the attack I let loose successfully knocked the goblin's consciousness away. Carrying the goblin's body up, I ran back to the village. The worst possible situation flashed through the back of my mind. G.I.G.A., please be safe. After the war, I had left a building to Russia to use for healing the wounded. I entered that building with the goblin in my arms. What I saw left me speechless. G.I.G.A., at those muttered words, G.I.G.A. opened his eyes. His right arm was missing from his right shoulder. His left leg was also gone from his left knee which was dressed in bandages stained in blue blood. Chief, are you well? Yes. I'm all right. I'm all right thanks to you. As I lay the goblin in my arms, I rushed up to Giaiga's side. The other goblins also opened their eyes, and they looked at me, but I couldn't say anything back to them. Then, that's good. Relieved at my words, Giaiga closed his eyes. Right. From now on too, continue to work for me. This isn't the place for you to die. G.I.G.A. smiled, but only one side of his cheeks rose. Chief, how strict. Of course. The enemies that we will face from now on will only grow stronger and more numerous. If at that time you're not around, then who will protect me? I'm happy, Chief. To hear those words. Quietly, I nodded. Chief, please, what is it? Please congratulate these men as well. At the other end of his line of sight were the goblins who were looking toward us. Right, of course. Of course. With my shaking legs, I stood up, and I went to each of the goblins. Some had lost their legs. Some had lost their arms. Some had taken a hit to their head, making it a wonder how they were still alive. I walked to each and every one of those goblins. And then as I looked them in the eye, I patted them on their shoulder, and I thanked them for their service. Then I went to G.I.G.A. again. G.I.G.A., live, I ordered him. You have to. But my body is, can no longer fight, is what he seemed to say as he struck his own shoulder. I will think of a way. So, stand with me once more, and fight with me. Chief, as I said that, I left the building. Well. Was that leg hopeless? I inquired Rashia when I went out. She must have been trying to be considerate as she leaned her back to the wall while she looked up to the sky. Yeah, I can't compensate for the loss of a limb. I see. Having heard only that, I left. The fire that blazed within my chest could not be quelled. So I ran. I ran and ran. All the way from the village to the lake. As I neared it, I yelled. G -u 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 -o -o -a. I want to spit out my soul. He can't fight. He can't fight anymore. The warrior who lives to fight can no longer fight. I want to scream. I want to howl and spit out this anguish. Reshia can't restore limbs. Even if she uses her power it's impossible. Of course, I thought of it. And I was supposed to have been prepared for it too. But, somewhere sometime, I turned my face away. Intoxicated by the heat of battle, drunk in the fervor of defeating a worthy adversary, I failed to think of the result. If I had only thought of it for a little, then I would have understood. What it meant to sacrifice. And its weight. I. I. The one who took his limbs away was me. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it at all. The weight of twenty goblins' lives. I can't waste it. No, I can't waste their sacrifices. So I mustn't forget. I must never allow myself to forget this pain. I will not run. I will not run away from this pain. And I will definitely, definitely become the king. R U U U A R U R U R U A. Facing toward the calm lake, I howled. Author's note. He might not have been the protagonist, but I didn't let him die yet. Sorry if I misled some people with my suggestive words. TL note. I added the smiley face. Omega. Chapter 46. Pursuit. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Goblin named Cheat Sheet. 
the G goblin, is to make it easier to control plus F, goblin, G I G A the goblin in that estranged group that was with the protagonist when he defeated an orc. He is currently a noble class, the highest amongst the protagonist's subordinates. He prefers to use the spear. Goblin, G I Gu the former leader of the village. He was pressured by the protagonist in his goblin noble form and was added to his subordinates. He uses the long sword and is relatively smart for a goblin rare. Became a goblin noble in chapter 39. Goblin, G.I.G.I. -G -I known as a beast warrior, a goblin with the ability to tame beasts. He evolved while hunting spear deer with the protagonist. He prefers to use the axe. His goblin class is rare. Goblin, G.I. Go a goblin with many wounds on his body. The food of his horde was stolen by the gray wolves, so he made a decision to follow the protagonist. He is the most experienced amongst the goblin rares. His weapon is a curved katana. He acts like a samurai. Goblin, G.I. Za the druid goblin rare that recently joined them. Goblin, G.I. G.A. Goblin rare. He evolved in chapter 37 after hunting with G.I. Ga, race, goblin, level, 5, class, lord, horde chief, possessed skills, ruler of the horde insurgent, will overpowering how swordsmanship be. Insatiable Desire King's Soul Ruler's Wisdom I Eyes of the Blue Snake Dance at Death's Border Red Snake's I Magic Manipulation Soul of a Crazed Warrior Third Impact, the Third Chant, Instinct Ruler's Wisdom Two Divine Protection, Goddess of the Underworld, Altesia, Attributes, Darkness, Death, Subordinate Beasts, High Cobalt Heisu, LV1, Gastra, LV1, Cynthia, LV1, Abnormal Status, Charm of the Saint Reflected on the Surface of the Mirror was a Figure with Gray Skin and golden eyes like those of a snake. The mane extending from the head to the back was black, and the body was slightly bigger than that of the Duke class. The figure was just barely small enough to pass for a big human. On the right arm was pitch black, varied. The area he was coiled around was now a little bigger than before. As for the figure's face, it hadn't changed much. It had the same banality as that of the reptiles. Then from the head could be seen three horns growing. Two were wrenched, while the other reached for the sky. But what was most surprising was the tail that had now grown. When I tried touching my skin, I noticed that some body hair had grown. I could move my tail at will. As for how it feels, it's difficult to put to words. After all, it's something I didn't have as a human. If I were to give an illustration, it would be somewhat similar to having an extra leg by the tailbone. I continued to swing my tail, trying to understand the sensation. It seems I'm not able to swing my tail as fiercely as the kobolds can. Exactly where is my evolution headed, I wonder. With my feelings renewed, I went over to the lake and took a good look at my own reflection. Unfortunately, I could only tilt my head when I saw my reflected face. If this is the hobby of that goddess, then I say, she has no taste. My face had few wrinkles on it and was even smooth like that of a human's. But undoubtedly, it was still definitely a goblin. If you add the mane and the tail on top of that, then I'm no longer a goblin, but a beast. It's hard to come to terms with it. Still, Reshia and the other goblins didn't flinch when they saw this appearance. If so, then this is undoubtedly me. If anything, I'm more surprised about their reactions. Normally, when someone changes this much, you'd wonder who it is when you first see them. Well, I did grow some body hair, so I guess it's something to be happy about. I'm a bit closer to mammals now instead of the previous reptiles. Well then, let's leave the discussion on this figure that I don't want to see. When I saw how fiendish my laughter was when reflected on the lake, for a moment, I thought my heart would stop. I'm surprised the others can take this without batting an eyelid. When I got back to the village, I went back to the king's house to receive the report and fully understand the current state of the horde. At the same time, I also took the opportunity to see the status of the goblin rares. Normally, I wouldn't push myself and just do it tomorrow. But unfortunately, there's not much time left. The next goblin is a druid. The goblin that entered looked exactly like a human. It was a druid. 
Race, Goblin, Level 1, Class, A Druid, Possessed Skills, Magic Manipulation, Water Arts Manipulation, Divine Protection, Water God, Iron, Attributes, Water Come to think of it, this is the first time I'm seeing the status of a Druid with the Red Snake's Eye. Hmm. So the E class isn't rare, but Druid. So if they were to promote up a class, they'll stop being Druids. I'll be looking forward to G.I. Zaw's next evolution then. I might see a new kind of goblin. I name you G.I. Zo. Thank you, Chief. I am most grateful. So he really can speak smoothly. It seems G.I. Za isn't an exception. G.I. Za might be a good successor to leave the village to. If I were to leave everything to him right at the start, disputes might happen. So I should instead gather some trusted ones first to leave everything to, and have him gather experience that way. After I sent the goblin off, the old goblin's voice came. Continuing. The next goblin is a student of the spear under Lord G.I. Ga. Race, goblin, level, 1, class, rare, possessed skills, spearmanship C. Knowledge of the spear spear throwing overpowering howl unreasonably stubborn, divine protection, none, attributes. None knowledge of the spear compensates for one's spear technique, raising it up a level. Unreasonably stubborn allows one to move for a short moment after receiving enough damage to die. As expected from G.I. Ga's faction, they are well dot first in the way of the spear. If I were to fight his men with only the spear, I probably won't be able to win. I name you G.I. Da. Thank you. You really can't expect goblin rares to be able to speak well. Not that it's inconvenient or anything. The goblin enthralled by the mad god was also promoted to the rare class. All these goblin rares being born from G.I. Ga's faction is undoubtedly a testament to the fierceness of the battle they were thrown into, but at this rate, will his faction end up dissolving? No, in fact, I should probably have it dissolve as soon as possible. How about if I have him teach the newly born goblins and the injured ones? It might be worth trying out. The next goblin is from Lord G.I. Gu's faction. Race, goblin, level, 1, class, rare, possessed skills, overpowering hell swordsmanship C, wide. Open eyes omnivorous appeal wide, open eyes allows one to see the opponent's weakness. Appeal makes it easier to perform coordinated attacks. A skill with similar effects to my eyes of the blue snake, and a skill that makes coordination easier. As expected of G.I. Gu's faction. I name you G.I. D.J.I. Understood. Aside from those, there was also G.I. Da who learned the Beast Warrior skill. And the wind using Druid that I named G.I. Do. These goblins will be the ones to become the Horde's new strength, and will lead the goblins. If there are any problems, there's nothing else except of that goblin rare that was enthralled by the Mad God. I want do something about the issue, but... But right now, I have to prioritize giving orders to my other subordinates. The war didn't only leave damages to the buildings and to the people. There's also the countless corpses of orcs buried in the holes we dug around the village. As we won the battle, it's up to us to do something about that putrid smell emanating from those holes. I've never seen an undead, but it would be a problem if those corpses were to turn into one. It'll also be bad for our mental health. G.I.G.I. and G.I.G. have arrived. At the old goblin's words, I raised my head. Good work, I said. The two goblins kneeled before me. The ones who were called were the beast warrior, G.I.G.I., and the stealthy one, G.I.G. I want you two to follow the trail of the orcs, I declared as the two goblin rares raised their heads. Understood, they nodded. Go as soon as you're ready, I said. After I sent the two goblins off, I called for the former leader of the village, G.I. Gu. G.I. Gu, I'll leave the protection of the village to you. While I'm gone, do not allow the hunts to be delayed. And at the same time, you are to continue the village's repairs. By your will. Then quietly, I whispered right into G.I. Gu's ear. Also, please take care of G.I. Ga. Filled with sympathy, G.I. G.A. bowed his head deeper than ever. By your will, he exclaimed. Good. Now, go. I commanded. He is a noble class, and at the same time, he even has the sub-leader title. So he should be able to do the job well. 
as I dismissed Gi Gu, I called over the druid, Gi Za, and the receiver of the blessing of the sword god, Ra Barusa, Gi Go. Tomorrow, both of you shall lead your own troops, and pursue the orcs, I said. Are you sane? asked Gi Za as he paid careful attention to my response. To that, I nodded. The repairs of the villages are still far from completion, and we haven't grasped our own foothold. And yet you're saying we are to pursue the orcs, asked Gi Za. Yes. If we don't chase them now, the orcs will recover strength, and eventually come back. At that time, it'll be too late. So it's a gamble then. While the threat from the west is gone, we should pursue the orcs, and push on toward the west. And because of the quickness of this attack, the village will truly be released from the grasp of the orcs. This time too. The one who shall prevail will be I, I declared. Very well, king. I shall follow you, replied Gi Za as he turned on his heel. As the king commands, simply complied Gi Go. And so, Gi Go and Gi Za left to prepare for the pursuit. From the newly evolved rare goblins, I left Water Manipulator, Gi Zo, along with Gi Gu to protect the village. I also left Gi Da who learned the Beast Warrior skill to keep up communication with the Cobalts. It might be a bit abrupt for Gi Da, but I had his tamed dogs remember the smell of the Cobalts, and then as I gave him some meat to bring, I immediately sent him off. This is the so dot called line dot up. As for the rest of the goblin rares such as the wind user, G.I. Do, the wide, open-eyed, G.I. DJI, and the spear user, G.I. Da. I had them join the pursuit squads. The next day, with Mattis preservatives in stock, we began our pursuit. In our ranks were one noble class goblin, four goblin rares, and thirty normal goblins. I had them form three at man cells, and then I had the higher class goblins lead two group each. In addition to these, there's also the Beast Warrior, G.I.G.I., -I, and the stealthy G.I.G. who had gone ahead with a group of normal goblins under them each which totals to six normal goblins. Then back in the village, the number of goblins defending, without taking G.I.G.A. and the injured ones into the calculation, is 38. Of course, I also removed the pregnant female goblison, the larvae, and the old goblins. I want to put an end to this battle as soon as possible. As we were about to set off, a rare class goblin neared us. Chief, he said. The goblin whose head was scraping the ground is none other than the goblin that had received the divine protection of the mad god, that I had fought with yesterday. Please, king. Let me come with you in this expedition as well. It certainly might be better to have him somewhere I can observe rather than somewhere far away. All right. Go make your preparations. I immediately came up with a name to this subordinate of G.I. Gauze. I name you G.I. Zhu, I said. Thank you. I happily receive it. As he generously nodded, I made way for the West. TL Note G.I. DJI is actually just G.I. G with a long G sound with a different character. But just G is kind of confusing, so I'm calling the Goblin DJI instead. Also regarding the speech of the Druids being better. I can't show it as well in English as there's only one type of alphabet for the language, but the goblins normally talk with pauses and sometimes katakana mixed in with their words to emphasize their difficulty in speaking. Chapter 47 Timid Bui You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. TL Note G.I. DJI G.I. G. I think it's funnier like this, and I don't think it's any harder to remember than the other names anyway. Also swordsmanship should have been promoted to B plus several chapters ago. I forgot to update the status. It's there now. Goblin name cheat sheet. The G goblin is to make it easier to control plus F goblin. G I G A the goblin in that estranged group that was with the protagonist when he defeated an orc. He is currently a noble class, the highest amongst the protagonist's subordinates. He prefers to use the spear. Goblin, G.I. Gu, the former leader of the village. He was pressured by the protagonist in his goblin noble form and was added to his subordinates. He uses the long sword and is relatively smart for a goblin rare. Became a goblin noble in chapter 39. Goblin, G.I.G.I. known as a beast warrior, a goblin with the ability to tame beasts. 
he evolved while hunting spear deer with the protagonist. He prefers to use the axe. His goblin class is rare. Goblin, G.I. Goa goblin with many wounds on his body. The food of his horde was stolen by the gray wolves, so he made a decision to follow the protagonist. He is the most experienced amongst the goblin rares. His weapon is a curved katana. He acts like a samurai. Recently became a noble and received the divine protection of the sword god, R.A. Barusa. Goblin, G.I. Za the druid goblin rare that recently joined them. Goblin, G.I. G.A. Goblin rare. He evolved in chapter 37 after hunting with G.I. Ga, K. Goblin, G.I. Du druid. Uses wind magic. Goblin, G.I. G. Goblin rare. From G.I. Gu's faction. He is known for his wide, open eyes which allows him to see his opponent's weakness. Goblin, G.I. De Goblin rare. From G.I. Ga's faction. Notable skills are knowledge of the spear and unreasonably stubborn. Goblin, G.I. Zhu. Goblin rare. The goblin favored by the mad god, Zhu Oru. Has the mad dog skill. Chapter 47. Timid Bui, race, goblin, level, 5, class, lord, horde chief, possessed skills, ruler of the horde insurgent, will overpowering hell swordsmanship be plus insatiable desire, king's soul ruler's wisdom. I eyes of the blue snake dance at death's border, red snake's eye magic manipulation soul of a crazed warrior third impact. The third chant, instinct ruler's wisdom too, divine protection, goddess of the underworld, Altesia, attributes. Darkness, death, subordinate beasts, high cobalt Hesu, LV1, Gastra, LV1, Cynthia, LV1. Abnormal status, charm of the saint as we exterminated the lizard doubles, the giant aunts, and the pickle snaps that were in our way, we headed west. Have you grasped the trail of the orcs? I asked. The druid G.I. Za nodded to my inquiry. Of course, he replied. G.I. Za and the newly evolved druid, the wind user, G.I. Du, were positioned within the center of the magic. Using goblins that were at the center of the army formation. Moving in front were the wide to opened eye, G.I. G., and the receiver of the divine protection of the sword god, R.A. Barusa, G.I. Go. The next highest class to me is the noble class G.I. Go. So I'm having the goblins from G.I. Gu's faction that specialize in coordination follow him to support him. Substituting for G.I.G.A. who couldn't move due to his injuries, is the spear dot specialist. G.I. Dip positioned in the back are he and the one who received the divine protection of the mad god, Zhu Oru, G.I. Zhu. The ones who I sent a day ahead are the beast warrior, G.I.G.I., and the stealthy G.I.G. It's thanks to intermittent communication with them that we are able to follow the orcs' trails, King. A messenger from Lord G.I.G.I. has arrived, said G.I. Za. What entered my vision was the figure of a dog big enough to tower over the goblins, running through the meadows. As I nodded to G.I. Za's words, I ordered the army following from behind to stop. Enemy, seems, divided to two groups, reported G.I.G.I.'s G.I. subordinate, who could also control beasts, after he spoke with the dog. So they're separated into two groups. Do you know how many there are? I asked. G.I.G.I.'s G.I.'s goblin subordinate shook his head. The direction. The goblin pointed toward the west and the north. Seeing that, I gave out my orders. G.I. Go, take three groups under you, and meet the enemy in the north, I commanded. Understood. G.I.G., G., you're coming with me, said G.I. Go. Yes, quickly nodded G.I.G. G. as he began to run with G.I. Go and the others. If it's the noble class G.I. Go, then he should have enough strength to contest the orcs by himself. Moreover, with G.I.G. who specializes in coordinating with him, they should be able to manage even against six orcs. Of course, I've also taken into my calculations psychological pressure they are receiving from the ones being chased. G.I. Da, take the lead. G.I. Zhu, go protect the back. We're moving out. I took a mouthful of jerky into my mouth and bit it. With the tamed dog in lead, we chased after the orcs. It's been two days since we began pursuing the orcs. We quietly moved in the dead of the night. Eyes that work in the dark are really convenient. The darkness of the night is considered a natural enemy for humans, but since coming to this world, it's become an ally. 
The path the orcs traversed was not a complicated forested path, but rather, a relatively open area. It's true that this path is faster, but this also means that the pursuers' attacks will become relentless. If they can run quickly, then we can also chase quickly. Moreover, they're carrying wounded orcs with them. We confirmed it in the meadows this afternoon. There are patches of blood here and there, so they're definitely carrying their wounded with them. I don't know how far they've gotten by now, but I want to close the distance while we still have the upper hand. It would be pointless to attack when the ones tired are us after all. I looked around the surrounding area as I took a mouthful of my meat jerky. Then I followed the guide dog. Suddenly, at that moment, a pungent smell wafted to my nose, causing me to stop at my tracks. The dog ahead also stopped and even began to groan. The smell of blood, muttered G.I. Zaw. I quietly nodded in affirmation. My eyes swam around, searching for any hints of presence. The smell must have been brought by the wind blowing from ahead. Which would mean? We caught up. Giida, take your subordinates, and see what's ahead. The spear dot specialist Giida, who I had left the position of the vanguard to, slowly nodded his head, then he moved ahead. Although he was paying careful attention to his surroundings, he moved surprisingly fast. King, it's the corpse of an orc. I neared the corpse while keeping my guard up. So this is the source of the smell. Looking at it carefully, I see there are scars all over the body. It's not hard to realize that this orc exhausted all of his strength here. So he exhausted himself here, huh? I muttered to myself. I ordered Giida and his men to deal with the corpse. They're close. Can we catch up to them in a day? asked the druid chief, Giaiza, as he took a peep at the corpse. If possible I wish to do just that. But, if they were running to just one direction, then it would be fine. But I have to also consider the possibility of them lying in wait to ambush us. I can't let my guard down. The fact that they left behind a corpse means that they're being driven into a corner. They didn't have the luxury to hide the corpse. Or is it a trap? A trap to weaken our noses. I thought of that possibility as well, but I shook my head. No, there's no one left to lead the orcs right. If there was, then I wouldn't have been left alone while I was on the verge of death. There's nothing to fear. We'll continue like this, and pursue the orcs. Because they have been walking throughout the night, fatigue could now be seen amongst the goblins. But their efforts were appropriately rewarded. The stealthy G.I.G. had finally caught up to the orc horde. Right now, we are rendezvousing with G.I.G. and will rest in the forest as we observe the orcs. The orc horde currently number 20. It's a lot bigger than what I had expected, but they are clearly exhausted. We continued to observe the orcs while being wary of the wind's direction. That orc has been controlling the orc since a while ago, said G.I.G. as he pointed his fingers. On the other end of the direction he was pointing it was an orc that was a size smaller than the others. Uh, child. I asked. After thinking for a while, G.I.G. shook his head. No, it shouldn't be that young. But that orc's definitely responsible for keeping the horde together. The fastest way to win a fight between hordes is to finish off the head. As I narrowed my eyes, I took a peek at the orc horde again. There, I saw a bigger orc push away the smaller orc. They seem to be having some internal disputes, I commented. Yes. It's been like that for some time now, responded G.I.G. It must be dissatisfaction from being ordered around by someone with a physique clearly weaker than theirs. And right after suffering a defeat too. Tell me about the orc horde that split off from this one. Yes. While I listened to G.I.G.'s report, the orcs continued to fight. Apparently, the horde that split off from this horde separated after fighting with the smaller orc. The one leading this horde is that smaller orc. It seems to want to completely retreat. Chances are it probably wants to retreat back home as soon as possible. And since it actually brought the weakened orcs with it, it doesn't seem to be tainted by the law of the jungle. In other words, it's an intellectual. Or at the very least, it's smarter than the bigger orc that pointlessly pushed it. From my fight with GOLGOL, -GOL, I know that orcs can more or less talk. 
Up till now we haven't shared any conversations aside from with our overpowering howls, but if there are also intellectuals amongst them, then it should be possible to negotiate. If anything, it would mean that there's no need to completely exterminate the orcs. There's no reason to fuss over a few pebbles on my way to become the Goblin King after all. The restoration of the village is also halfway done. I don't want to needlessly expose the goblins to danger. You will lose her, you know. Altesia's words echoed within my mind. The human threat coming from the east. Rather than destroying the orcs, the danger lies in the east. I need to use everything I have in order to strengthen my weak pieces. As I was caught up within my thoughts, I saw the bigger orcs take five with it as they separated from the horde. What shall we do? asked G.I.G. Attack, of course, I curtly replied. The corners of my mouth naturally rose up, forming a smile. If there is any question, that would be. Which to attack first? Master Bui, as the gazes of my wounded brethren fell on me, I raised my fallen gaze up. Master Goy and the others have, their voices were all shaken up. In order to soothe their panic, I clearly replied. I had them fight the goblins as a separate horde. It's clearly a lie, but even then, I mustn't show any weakness. I couldn't throw my wounded brethren away, and we spent so much time gathering our comrades. I don't think I made the wrong choice, but even then, I can't help but fear. It's almost as if the goblins chased after us right after we left. I ran away from the goblin village after the death of Master G.O.L. G.O.L. with my wounded brethren in tow because I was scared. That goblin king. Even though he had a small body like mine, the aura surrounding his body was completely different. It was scary. Using a flame.clad great sword, a mere goblin actually exchanged blows with Master Go G.O.L. and won. A heaven to earth revolving event or a bolt from the blues. I don't know. I don't know what I should call it, but anyway, it was a shock. Let's rest a bit, I said. Right. We should have also inflicted plenty of damage against the goblins. They shouldn't be able to chase after us right away. So it should be fine if we just rest here for a bit, and let everyone recover their strength. All right, responded the others. Seeing my brethren nod their head, I sat myself as well. My sword and spear are unusually heavy. It seemed like I could drop it at any time, so I left it on the ground. Master G.O.L. G.O.L. who appointed young and little me is no longer here. Goy Egue and the others are all my seniors, so they refused to listen to my orders, and acted on their own. I know. I know that it's because I'm not strong enough. I don't have the power to make them give in, that's why they left. Even the orcs here too. The only reason they're following my orders is because Master G.O.L. G.O.L.'s influence is still lingering. I want power. At the very least, something like that of the Goblin Kings. Suddenly, I heard a voice scream from the forest. My nose moved, and the smell of blood wafted to my nose. It's the blood of my brethren. The distance is, no way. Why are there so many goblins nearby? And these many too. Everyone, stand up. Flustered, I quickly wielded my shield and sword. But as I was about to set a root, I was shocked. Why are there goblins in front of us? As I was thinking that, another scream bellowed out from behind. Goblin. They should have been a species weaker than us. But right now, what stood in front was a goblin with tawny skin, a black mane fluttering over its three horns, a vicious face, and a physique that was incomparable to us, it's him. The goblin king who killed Master G.O.L. G.O.L. He's chased after us. M. Master Bui, someone called out to me. With my legs shaking, I walked toward the king of the goblins. His face was broadly grinning. It was vicious. Scary. 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 The subordinates behind the goblin king threw something. Goy. Goy and the others who separated from the horde before had been dismembered and thrown at our feet. G-U-R-U-A. The howl of the goblins bellowed, sending chills up our backs, causing our feet to vigorously shake. Scary. 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 This is even scarier than when there was a giant spider. Orcs. 
the Goblin King's voice echoed. It's as if his great voice was shaking even the very pits of my stomach. Scary. I will give you a chance. As I stood there in front of my brethren, I heard voices scream out from behind me again. Swallowed by the fear, and from a quick look at the surrounding area, I knew. We were already completely surrounded by the goblins. Fall under my lead. If you refuse, then you shall all die here. We'll be eaten. Scary. 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 A. Ah. Uh. I couldn't talk straight. G. Give M. Me time to T. Talk with my B. Brethren. For a moment, I thought I felt the goblin's golden pupils flash. No. If you are the chief, then you must decide. It's impossible. Unlike Master G.O.L. G.O.L., I don't have the power to convince my brethren. The only reason I was able to bring everyone here is because of Master G.O.L. G.O.L.'s influence. For someone like me to. T. That's, Master Boy, I turned my head to that shriek, and there, I saw my brethren all looking at me. That gaze of theirs that seemed to cling to me made me want to cry. I can't answer to your expectations. I'm small. I'm weak. I'm a crybaby. That's why. That's why this is the only choice I can make. Oh. From the Goblin King's subordinate, I heard a voice that seemed to both be shocked and admiring. We will surrender, Goblin King. I accept, Orc King. Wrong. I'm not the Orc King. That's a title only Master G.O.L. G.O.L. has. Someone like me is. Someone like me could never become a king. But even as I thought that, I shook my head to the Goblin King's words. Orc King. Like this, we became subordinated to the goblins. Orc King Bowie, LV34, has been subordinated. Author's Note. So they were able to take control of an orc tribe. I came to like Bui as I was writing the chapter. TL note. Not sure what was going on in this chapter. Either author mistake, or he changed something, but he didn't seem to say anything in the author's notes, so maybe it really is a mistake. I don't know. In any case, one, he wrote Perusa instead of Barusa, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that a typo. So I kept it as Barusa for you guys. Second, there's the skin color which was written as gray in the other chapter, but now it's brown. The only other translation is ashen for the previous chapters, so... Yeah, maybe author mistake or it was changed. But I don't see any change notes anywhere. Or maybe Protag just doesn't know the difference between brown and gray. <laughs> I don't know. Chapter 48 The Messenger from the West you are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Goblin name Cheat Sheet. The G Goblin is to make it easier to control plus F, Goblin, G-I-G-A the Goblin in that estranged group that was with the protagonist when he defeated an orc. He is currently a noble class, the highest amongst the protagonist's subordinates. He prefers to use the spear. Goblin, G-I Gu the former leader of the village. He was pressured by the protagonist in his goblin noble form, and was added to his subordinates. He uses the long sword, and is relatively smart for a goblin rare. Became a goblin noble in chapter 39. Goblin, G.I.G.I. known as a beast warrior, a goblin with the ability to tame beasts. He evolved while hunting spear deer with the protagonist. He prefers to use the axe. His goblin class is rare. Goblin, G.I. Go a goblin with many wounds on his body. The food of his horde was stolen by the Grey Wolves, so he made a decision to follow the protagonist. He is the most experienced amongst the goblin rares. His weapon is a curved katana. He acts like a samurai. Recently became a noble and received the divine protection of the sword god, R.A. Barusa. Goblin, G.I. Za the druid goblin rare that recently joined them. Goblin, G.I.G.A. Goblin Rare. He evolved in Chapter 37 after hunting with G.I. Ga, Goblin, G.I. Do Druid. Uses Wind Magic. Goblin, G.I.G. Goblin Rare. From G.I. Goose Faction. He is known for his wide, open eyes which allows him to see his opponent's weakness. 
Goblin, GI de Goblin Rare. From GI Gauze Faction. Notable skills are knowledge of the spear and unreasonably stubborn. Goblin, GI Zoo. Goblin Rare. The goblin favored by the mad god, Zoo Oru. Has the mad dog skill. Chapter 48. The Messenger from the West, Race, Goblin, Level, 5, Class, Lord, Horde Chief, Possessed Skills. Ruler of the Horde Insurgent, will overpowering Hell Swordsmanship be plus insatiable desire, King's Soul Ruler's Wisdom. I Eyes of the Blue Snake Dance at Death's Border, Red Snake's Eye Magic Manipulation Soul of a Crazed Warrior Third Impact. The Third Chant, Instinct Ruler's Wisdom 2, Divine Protection, Goddess of the Underworld, Altesia. Attributes, Darkness, Death, Subordinate Beasts, High Cobalt Heisu, LV1, Gastra, LV1, Cynthia, LV1, or King Bowie, LV36, Abnormal Status, Charm of the Saint, when I got back to the village, I had the orcs immigrate. I gave them G.I. Zaw's old place, the one situated by the root of the giant tree. The area surrounding it is a wasteland, so it's perfect for the orcs. After that, I made a simple agreement with that small frightened orc. I distributed different hunting grounds for the orcs and the goblins. I also gave instructions on how to deal with the humans should they enter the forest. This is how I separated the orcs from the goblin. There is a lake northwest of the great heaven, Piercing Tree. So I permitted the orcs to live off of the north and east banks of the lake there. This decision is something I made in order to create a breakwater for the humans entering. With this, there won't be any issues between the orcs and the goblins. Aside from me and the noble classes, the goblins don't have a way of resisting the orcs. But even if it weren't for that, I don't want unneeded conflict. That would only serve to benefit the threat from the east. Is it really alright with just this? asked Boy. The small and frightened orcs' words were unusually impressive. I've always thought of orcs as brutes who always try to solve everything with power, but it would seem there are also orcs such as this one. As Bui nodded quietly, he let out a sigh of relief. Being the orc king seems to be hard, but I have no intention of taking care of him that much. At most, I just want him to stay clear of my way, and not be a threat to the humans. With this, the door to the west has finally opened before me. When I got back to the village, the cleaning was mostly done. What's left was repairing the fences, but that'll take some time. I asked G.I. Gu, who I had left the village to in my absence, if anything happened while I was gone. A messenger came, said G.I. Gu. What? I asked, surprised. A messenger from the tribes. I asked him to wait. The tribes. A messenger. Now where have I heard that before? From what tribe? I asked. Please ask him yourself, replied G.I. Gu, not knowing either. While puzzled, I ended up having to meet with a messenger from some tribe. The messenger that was made to wait at the king's house was apparently a goblin rare. But although he was a goblin he was clearly different from the goblins that lived in this village. If you were to ask what's different, well for starters, he's wearing clothes. He's dressed simply, but he has a belt fastened around his waist, and is even wearing a pair of shoes. But that's not all that stood out. Beside him lay what was clearly a bow. Even though goblins are normally too clumsy with their hands, he's able to use a bow. The goblin sat quietly as he waited for me to take the seat of honor, then he spoke. Thank you for granting me an audience. I am a child of Gatsumi, R.A. Gilmi of the Ganra tribe of the Four Tribes, declared the messenger fluent speech and a dignified manner. He gives off the impression that he's used to matters such as this. Let me hear why you've come, I said. I looked down on the goblin as I implored him to speak. Leader of the Eastern Village, please save Ganra, requested the Gimli. His skin is no different from the other rare classes, yet his intellect is clearly above the rare class. Is that because he's from one of the four tribes? Come to think of it, didn't he just call me the ruler of the east? How much truth is there in the words of this goblin from the west? I strained my eyes to find the answer to that. Of course, we will give you an appropriate reward. We are willing to give you a young elven lady as a reward. So an elf has finally made an appearance. 
If I recall correctly, they should be situated at the back regions, so it shouldn't be easy to catch one. But then considering the goblin's reproduction, it's probably necessary to capture a female from some other species. To have another settlement like the village we have here where the breeding is covered solely by the female goblins would undoubtedly require a powerful king. So what is it that you wish of me? I asked him. Please fight off one of the four tribes, Gaidga, he replied. You are fighting with your fellow tribes. Is the West that blessed compared to us here who are only able to barely acquire food for ourselves? But then again, there might also be threats of orcs, and perhaps even giant spiders deep in the forest. It's embarrassing, however, the truth is that a curse has been cast upon us four tribes. A curse. A curse since ancient times. A curse that dictates that the one we bow to will be the king who will lead the goblins. Ho. I would like to help you, but this village is currently under repair. Gilmi opened his eyes wide upon hearing my words. It was as if what I said was out of his expectations. The goblin cast his eyes down as he seemingly began to ponder. Give me five days, I said. Like a string that had been strung, Gilmi quickly looked back at me. As I nodded generously, Gilmi bowed his head deep enough to touch the ground. Change the name, asked Giaiza, puzzled. I lightly shook my head at the druid chief's, Giaiza's, questioning voice. To be more precise, I thought of giving another name, I said. Exactly what do you have in mind, asked the old goblin. As I nodded, I answered the old goblin's inquiry. The village has grown bigger. Until now I've given simple names, but from here on we will be confronting the tribes. My vague words left the two puzzled as they both tilted their heads. Why do we need more names when confronting the tribe? At the old goblin's inquiry, I nodded and answered. What do you think when you hear, the child of Gatsumi, R.A. Gilmi? As expected of someone from the tribes, when Giaiza heard the old goblin's simple answer, his eyes opened wide. Estaeso, that's why. Giaiza's face twisted into a smile. That mischievous smile of his doesn't lose out to me. His smile is plenty dark. Legitimate blood, a blood that can support a person. It doesn't matter whether one is a human or a goblin, there's a natural sense of respect for one who possesses that kind of blood. Even I couldn't believe my ears when I heard Gilmi name himself. Thinking about it now, I was honestly surprised that time. But if that's the case, then we too must play that card. Whenever one speaks of the tribes, there is an implication of pride in the olden blood. A lineage to be respected. If I were to say it myself, I think the lineage itself carries with it actual power. So what are you planning to do exactly? Are you going to give the new name to rare classes up? No. I'll start handing it out from noble classes. First, I'll give G.I.G.A. one. I'll call him. Please. G.I.G.A. can't walk, so I let G.I. Zaw directly face him. G.I.G.A. came as he pierced his spear, then he sat like that on the ground. Then place his one hand on the ground, he looked up to me. G.I.G.A., I give you a new name, I declared. That's, G.I.G.A. hesitated. G.I. is the name of this village. G.A. is the name I gave you. Thanks to your achievements in this recent battle, I give you the right to a household. Thus, I grant you a last name. A right to a house. If you wish, I could give you a village. My words left everyone in shock, causing them all to look on wide-eyed. It's the proof of the weight of my trust. And I won't give a last name just to anyone, only those with enough strength will be worthy of one. As I explained, G.I. Ga's body shook. King, am I unneeded? asked G.I.G.A. Don't misunderstand. All I'm giving you is the right. If you so wish, then you can continue to stay beside me, I responded. But as proof of his honor and power, I will give him a last name. If at all possible, please let me serve under the king, petition Giaiga, I understand. But for the sake of rewarding you for the power you've shown me, accept this name. By your will. From here on, you are Giga Rax. I gratefully accept. In the same way, I named the others G.I. Guverbina and G.I. Go Amitsuki. By the way, King. 
After I had dismissed the noble class goblins from the king's house, Gi Zha asked me a question. What? If you were to give me a last name, what would you give me? At that moment, a flash of inspiration shot through my mind, and I answered him with a huge grin on my face. How about Gi Zha Zha? I jokingly replied. It's based on the same naming sense he suggested when we were thinking of a name for the Grey Wolves. When said that to G.I. Za, his face was visibly shocked as he went quiet. Ha! 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 It's a joke. I'll leave the pleasure of thinking of a name for when you actually evolve. Meanie King. What? Even this is thanks to having a good teacher. I thoroughly enjoyed myself in this rare time of peace. Author Note. An opened path. A new name. The return of the king is at hand. Gossips. A pet's sorrow. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 49. To the West. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. TL Note. Author changed Barajua tribe to Parajua. Goblin named Cheat Sheet, the High Goblin, is to make it easier to control plus F, Goblin, G-I-G-A the Goblin in that estranged group that was with the protagonist when he defeated an orc. He is currently a noble class, the highest amongst the protagonist's subordinates. He prefers to use the spear. Goblin, G.I. Gu, the former leader of the village. He was pressured by the protagonist in his goblin noble form and was added to his subordinates. He uses the long sword and is relatively smart for a goblin rare. Became a goblin noble in chapter 39. Goblin, G.I.G.I. known as a beast warrior, a goblin with the ability to tame beasts. He evolved while hunting spear deer with the protagonist. He prefers to use the axe. His goblin class is rare. Goblin, G.I. Go a goblin with many wounds on his body. The food of his horde was stolen by the Grey Wolves, so he made a decision to follow the protagonist. He is the most experienced amongst the goblin rares. His weapon is a curved katana. He acts like a samurai. Recently became a noble and received the divine protection of the sword god, R.A. Barusa. Goblin, G.I. Za the druid goblin rare that recently joined them. Goblin, G.I. G.A. Goblin Rare. He evolved in Chapter 37 after hunting with G.I. Ga, K Goblin, G.I. Do Druid. Uses Wind Magic. Goblin, G.I. G. Goblin Rare. From G.I. Gu's faction. He is known for his wide, open eyes which allows him to see his opponent's weakness. Goblin, G.I. De Goblin Rare. From G.I. Ga's faction. Notable skills are knowledge of the spear and unreasonably stubborn. Goblin, G.I. Zhu. Goblin Rare. The goblin favored by the mad god, Zhu Oru. Has the mad dog skill. Chapter 49. To the West, Race, Goblin, Level, 5, A Class, Lord, Horde Chief, Possessed Skills, Ruler of the Horde Insurgent, Will Overpowering Hell Swordsmanship Be Plus Insatiable Desire, King's Soul Ruler's Wisdom. I eyes of the blue snake dance at death's border red snake's eye magic manipulation soul of a crazed warrior third impact. The third chant, instinct ruler's wisdom too, divine protection, goddess of the underworld, Altesia, attributes. Darkness, death, subordinate beasts, high cobalt Hesu, LV1, Gastra, LV1, Cynthia, LV1, or King Bui, LV36, abnormal status. Charm of the Saint Cynthia and Gastra played about with my tail that was like a toy for cats as I swung it. The two grey wolves, Cynthia and Gastra, have gotten bigger recently. They're about 50 centimeters long now. And although it's wrong, they're big enough to ride. Even their levels have risen too. They started at 1, and now they're 20. I can't let them act like babies forever. From time to time, when Heisu, the High Cobalt, would drop by, they'd end up grappling with each other. But as it wasn't anything serious, just friendly rough play, I'd just quietly watch over them. I guess if anything, they must have been deciding the ranks. They are all similar dog that type races, after all. I mean Cobalts and Wolves are all dogs after all, right? Anyway, it's been three days since the messenger came, and we've been repairing the village since. During that time, 
I ordered the orcs that are now living by the base of the great tree to the north to pick up the corpses here at the village. They were a great help. Half of the pitfall traps we made have also become functional again. Moreover, 10% of the fences have also been repaired. We also began a large dot scale acquisition of food resources. As we did, I ascertained the course we would be taking. The plan is to leave the minimum number of goblins with the humans in the village while we head west. Once there, I plan to turn Ganra's village into my base of operations as I attempt to have Gaidga and the other tribes under my rule. Of course, I didn't mention that part to the messenger. Our last destination will be the acquisition of the Fortress of the Abyss, the home of the goblins. It is there where I will build my kingdom. Afterwards, I suppose I'll take with me the promising humans and the kobolds too. Once I put this plan into action, the village will be left unattended for a long time. At that time, the one to protect the humans will be. My gaze shifted toward the grey wolves that were playing with my tail. Cynthia was lying on her back, being playful as always, while Gastra seemed to have grown bored of playing and was lying down, yawning. They're resembling the high kobold, Heisu, more and more. I won't say of what exactly, but I should be careful. Protect the humped no. Protect Reshia. Protect her well, all right. I rubbed Gastra's small head as I spoke those words. And he barked back, saying, woof. Good. Although I don't really know whether he understood or not. In any case, I'll have to leave some rare class goblins behind to manage the village. The question is, who should I leave behind? I could leave a noble class, but then considering the humans, I should probably leave behind a druid. What a troubling question. King, did you call, said Giza as he entered the house of the king. Yes, there's something I want to ask you regarding the tribes, I replied. With his hands folded and a robe over his body, he looked like a scholar. I wonder why he's even a goblin. What is different from us, normal goblins, to those of the four tribes? I continued. What's different, you say? Right, as he pondered the question, he sat before me with his eyes closed. Right, I think I've mentioned it before, but the four tribes are Gordub, Gaidga, Paragua, and Ganra. Each one of these tribes carry with them the blood of the goblin ancestors. A story I've heard before. Regardless, it's an introduction to their fighting style, so I kept it in my mind as I continued to listen. As for their features, said G.I. Za. Well it's different for each tribe. That's precisely what I wanted to know. That is that these so-called tribes have turned themselves into factions of sort. With something like that, it wouldn't be strange if they managed to attain a peculiar evolution path. G.I. Za continued. The strongest amongst the four tribes is Gaidga, boasting superhuman strength, while the Paragua tribe manages the Rider.Beasts. Rider.Beasts, what are Rider.Beasts? If you've never seen one, it might be hard to explain, but they're basically four-legged beasts. The Paragua goblins ride them like Lord G.I.G.I. would one of his beasts. So they're riders in other words. The Gordub tribe excels at raising and using magical beasts. Then as for the Ganra tribe, they're the most dexterous with their fingers amongst the tribes. Even amongst the tribes, they're the only ones who can craft and use bows. So the Gordub tribe are all beast tamers then. I'm actually not that well informed either. How about asking that messenger instead? That's difficult, but, true. If needed, I should ask. In any case, it appears the four tribes have strength, mounts, bows, and beasts, huh? I want them. A front line of powerful goblins. A mobile force of beasts that riding goblins. Goblins that could fight from a distance. And goblins that possess special skills. If I could have all these, then building my kingdom won't remain just a dream. Finally, finally the pieces needed to fight the humans have gathered. All that's left is to acquire them. I must acquire them. And riding. If, if even normal goblins like us could fight on mount, then. I would like to acquire that skill. If, and this is hypothetical, but what if, such a thing was possible? Then wouldn't it be possible for a goblin who has lost his legs to fight once more? 
G-I-G-A racks the corners of my mouth twisted into a smile. Wait for me. Amongst the emotions that humans possess, empathy was the most unique compared to the other races. Who knows whether it's affinity or not, but ever since the attack of the orcs, Lily hadn't had to help the other humans too much. The need for that had greatly decreased. Big Sis, called out Byrne and Newman who had a sword strapped around each of their waists. Lily couldn't help but pout in dissatisfaction when she heard their words. Didn't I tell you to stop calling me, Big Sis, she snapped. Ah, uh, sorry. I, uh, slipped, said Byrne as he scratched his head. Newman could only laugh at his friend's blunder. With Lily having saved them, 15 villagers all in all, these people naturally came to rely on her. Before, Lily had to be the one to meet with the goblins even for the pettiest of things, but ever since the orc attack, the people have gotten less timid. Byrne and Newman are the only ones among the villagers who know how to wield a sword. But the extent of their knowledge is only from the bare experience gained when they were conscripted in the past. The difference between them and Lily, who is an adventurer that makes a living through her sword, is like night and day. Because of that, despite Byrne and Newman both being older than Lily by five years, they greatly respected Lily's swordsmanship. How's Pallone? And is Mill all right? He didn't get hurt from playing all the time did he asked Lily. Pallone is Byrne's wife. She's currently pregnant. As for Mill, that's Byrne's oldest son. He's still a babe though. He's turning five this year. Nah although we are expecting soon. Unfortunately, even if it's the second time already, there's not much a guy could do to help. As for Mill, well he's the same as always. Always playing with the goblin masters. I told him it's dangerous, but he just won't listen, said Byrne, clearly perplexed. His friend Newman could only pat his shoulders. It'll work out, Newman said. I hope it does, I hope it does, said Byrne back. Seeing the two like that, Lily narrowed her eyes. Come to think of it, have you two gotten used to this village? She asked. It's been almost half a month since they came to this village. Well, we can't put our guard down, but it's not bad, said Byrne. They don't make us pay taxes like humans do. They also don't make us fight, added Newman. Apparently, the Goblin King didn't have any intention of levying taxes. Lily's expectation of a wretched life where they were treated as slaves was completely off. The king was generous. His only demand was that they produce what he wants. That's all. What the king wanted was food and the methods of preserving it. Whenever she talked with the goblin king, Lily would mistake herself to be talking with royalty. An extraordinary one at that. The world outside the forest was in distress. Out there, Chaos ran rampant with many of the chiefs in constant war with each other. And evil masters were like the grains of the sand, far too numerous to count. She knew how filthy humans were. It was precisely because of that that she could not understand the goblins. Defeating monsters was common sense. Monsters are creatures with no other way of life but evil. Or at least that's what it should have been. Yet these past days have been telling her that that common sense was nothing but at the public stance. If so, then what should she do? She thought back to her respected employer. They have probably already sent out a group to retrieve Rescia. St. Rescia fell zeal. The Ivory Tower's youngest graduate. A prodigy. Zenobia's young follower. A cardinal candidate for the church. A woman blessed with power and authority regardless of her will. She doesn't know whether Rescia herself was aware, but Rescia's influence was one such that it was enough to move a nation. Right now is still fine. But once the goblin makes man his enemy, where will Rescia turn? And Lily herself as well, where would she go? She had to prepare herself. But just a little bit, she thought. She'd like to keep living in this miracle dot like peace. Woof, barked Gastra as he swayed his tail. She carried him up. You've also gotten heavier, she said. Who knew those fierce gray wolves could actually be this adorable? As she thought that, she quietly prayed. I wish this days would continue forever. As Gastra rubbed his cheeks on her, she sighed. 
As the evening wind gently caressed my cheeks, the bell cricket's song could be heard both near and far. Even though I have no sense for seasons, I can tell, the seasons are changing. As I absent-mindedly stared at the moon, I felt a presence near me. Moon.viewing asked Reshia. I only raised my tail in response. If you're that lazy, you'll be hated by women, you know, she said. Unfortunately. I'm not fated to be with one, I wryly smiled. Well, whatever. Can I sit next to you? Do what you want. This village will soon belong to you all. Not yet, you mean. That's a bit wrong, right? Well that's true. We absent-mindedly watched the moon together. How's G.I. Ga? I've never treated goblins before, but his life should be fine. His life, huh? Are you regretting, she asked. Nah. I'm not. If I'm going to regret, then I wouldn't have thought to fight from the start. My resolve is just lacking is all. The pain in this chest of mine is because I can't come to terms with living on despite others sacrificing themselves for me. Something like that should have been obvious from the start. But I can't help but have my heart torn because of it. This way of living, it's as if I'm cursed, unable to live without hurting those close to me. But I have to endure. I have to endure and move forward. Otherwise, there's no meaning to it. I wonder why you're so strong. Anyone would cry if they were sad. Anyone would run when in pain. No one would scorn you for doing so. No one has that right, said Reshia. It's because I'm a monster, I said back. I won't forgive any weaknesses from myself. Strength. Strength alone, will I carve upon this world as proof of my life. Until then. I won't shed any tears. And neither will I run. Am I man? Or am I a monster? I have the memory and thoughts of man, but the body of an abnormal monster. I decided it then when I chose to live this life. I don't need the weakness of man. Even if someone were to stand before you, asked Reshia. Yeah, that's right. With her eyes cast down like that. Reshia, what is she thinking? This wise girl who's praised as a saint and bound by the chains of destiny, what do you think? Of your destiny. Your life. Your will. I never wanted to be a saint, she said. I want to run. I want to be just Reshia. As she stood up on her knees, she faced toward me, and rested her hand on my chest. The sound of shattering entered my ears. With this there's nothing left to bind you. You can even kill me if you want, she said. As her eyes looked up, her gaze met with mine. Ardor filled her eyes and her cheeks stained with red. The breath she breathed woke up a force within me. I want to kill and eat this woman. I want to eat and violate and kill this woman. What are you hesitating for? Isn't she giving you her body? As that force twisted my thoughts, I looked back at her. Then you should fight. Against Zenobia. Against man. For that is the will of man. When I recalled the calm expression of the healing goddess upon seeing Reshia's face, I couldn't help but scowl. I said it, right, said Reshia. No one's that strong. People are weak. Her amethyst-like eyes, moistened and saddened, they shot at me. Please kill me, she said. If you don't, then one day. I will surely kill you. For that is my destiny, she muttered under that frightened, quivering voice of hers. I refuse, I replied. You are only running away. If you are human, then show me the will befitting that of man. King, she said. How strict. A sorrowful smile painted her lips. In turn, I could only caress her head. Tomorrow, I head west. When I return, I will return as the king of the goblins. Until then, please take care of G.I.G.A. and the others. I brushed off the dust as I stood up. Ah! Uh. I felt Reshia gaze at my back when I stood up, but I left without saying a word. I will become king. For the sake of those who've sacrificed themselves. For the sake of those who will die from here on. Until then.
I shall seek no one. Abnormal Status, Charm of the Saint Released Author's Note The protagonist didn't want to abandon the wounded, so Rashia had to stay behind.